And welcome to Small Biz Today Magazine yeah. Talk Show on the SBT Magazine, Magazine Radio Network. I miss Good SBT. Job. What is the matter with me? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you're left field. I you're was some other place. AFL, CIO, CIO. Or something. <laughs> anyway, I'm Steve Levine. I'm executive publisher of Small Biz Today Magazine. I'm Barbara Davis Levine, associate publisher, creative director, head writer, and editor for Small Business Day Magazine. See, I didn't forget you this time. Yeah. I forgot you that Last time, time you forgot forget, me. See, because that's uh, that one eye that I can't I know, see. Yeah, I know. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, over the eye. But I'm uh, executive publisher, and we are co hosts of this uh, talk show every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. From 4 to 5 p.m. Central. 4 to 5 p.m. Central Time, and our audience is aspiring entrepreneurs and small business owners. And our job is to educate, motivate, inspire, and empower you to achieve your dreams of big business success. We believe that small business is a rock hard foundation of our economy. We were founded as an economy in USA by shopkeepers, street merchants, cart craftsmen, little and little farmers. Carts, little carts. And then farmers, street. exactly. And uh, collectively, small business is the nation's largest employer. Collectively, small business is the largest taxpayer. And still the foundation of our economy. This shop small business Saturday should be shop Sh- small business every all the day, time. Every, every day. Every day. That's right. And... And being a product of small business, my uh, grandparents had two retail stores in upstate New York. I was clothed and fed on the money that came from those small businesses. So uh, I relate. And me, I've always been an entrepreneur from the time I was in sixth grade. I was buying and selling things that came out of gumball machines and learned about the law of supply and demand. They weren't available in my neighborhood, but my grandmother in another city could get them. So I'd take orders from They were called rat finks. I'm 63. I don't know. People know about those little ugly little things in the gumball machine. But the penny ones I'd sell for a nickel. The nickel ones I'd sell for a dime. And the dime ones I'd sell for a quarter. And I, and I made this is 1960 or so. Um, no, that was I was 62. Something like that. Um, I was um, making about five bucks a week, so that was about right. mad enterprise. And, and it used to be every time a friend would ask, "What are you selling now, Barbara?" I was always finding things in the attic or whatever and selling didn't you them. You sell a lot of Girl Scout cookies. I sold the most Girl Scout cookies in the state of Texas, and uh, I learned the basic uh, how to present yourself, how to give, introduce yourself, uh, tell them what it is, and, and then ask says, for I don't and, want then, any and Girl Scout then cookies? and be polite. I yes. smiled, say thank you anyway. And nine times out of ten, they say, "Oh, come back, your little girl." And so, even though people might have objections, I dealt with them and didn't get offended about it. I realized, well, they didn't want the cookies; they had nothing to do with me. And uh, so that's why I've always come up with ideas for uh, making money. When I, my late husband proposed me, I told him there were three things: I don't know how to cook; I'll try. I don't know how to wash clothes; probably not going to go there. I thought drive cleaning came with the house, and I, I said, and I will never clean toilets. It's just not my thing. I said, but we'll never go hungry because I'll always find a way to make money. There you and go. And I helped him to start his licensed customs broker business. I started a travel agency. Very successful. I had a print shop. We'll have to have you on the show. I have my, on the show. But the <laughs> bottom line is, I know what it is about being an entrepreneur sure. firsthand. Right. How it is to start with nothing and build something big. So we should talk about the magazine now. You, now we can. Yes. Well, that's why I'm the editor and head writer. Of it, because I edit every article that's ever submitted in here. None are infomercials. I put those out. We have about 45 submissions of columnists every month. And we only take about 20, 25, right? See? Mm-hmm. And every article is about benefiting one that's reading the magazine. How to get a small business loan. What if the banks say no? What are the six common mistakes people make going into business? And then, of course, the highlight of our magazine is the cover honoree. The cover story. nominated by our advisory board. That's right. And, and they are nominated mostly for their philanthropy and not necessarily for the financial success Well, it's a story. It's that business. they started right. with nothing and they've built something. It's not the dollar. We don't measure how much they make, but they've started with nothing. They've built something and that they give back. Those are the, the important things. They have started on their own without the use of a franchise or license the ar- arrangement and they've got a great story to tell which serves as inspiration and, and motivation for others and they're willing to share their words of wisdom, their best practices, words of advice, as if you had taken them out for dinner and and asked them, what would you recommend I do? What should I do? Those coaching tips are at the end of every cover story. Every story, except for the first one. 
<laughs> except for the first one because you weren't involved that's in that. right and from, then we had somebody who was had more great advice than story so i said let's okay l- this is my idea take it or leave it or and i don't mind mentioning that's hank moore who just wonderful. wrote the book houston legends, legends right and uh he and liked it, all advice and, and it, it was, wasn't necessarily he that was you and john interviewing that for every answer he had, y'all had another comment about All the All right, let's move on to another subject. Uh, the rest of the editorial provided by But that's expert it. Every columnist. story, this is really important. Yes. If one wants to go to the archives and look at the takeaway notes, it's the end of every cover story. Say you don't want to read the story and bio of the individual and how they got there, but these are the best words of advice, and I call it make a compendium of business, a Bible of business, per se. And when you start seeing duplicates on each person's story, each person's do's and don'ts, put a star because they say, what's a clue look like? You definitely want to incorporate that into your everyday business practices. That's right. Um, So the rest of the columns are provided by experts, as Barbara mentioned. Uh, You can still get a complimentary digital subscription at sbtmagazine.net. Or smallbusinesstodaymagazine.com. And we're just about to launch, probably next week, a brand new website with its own search engine by by topic, uh, by organization, and a by writer, master, by, by writer, by a master calendar of all small businesses. So all the organizations can yep. come in and put in their calendar of events. We'll start with our strategic partners, Women Business Enterprise Alliance, and Houston Minority Supplier Development Council, and Women Contract Association. And, and what about and the, the Houston Metropolitan Chamber, Chamber of Commerce, which we'll talk about that. later. Exactly, all the networking events, all the. The webinars, all the seminars, all the, the golf tournaments, everything, and certification programs, Office of Business Opportunity. We've got a lot. So that's all being totally redone for the first Exciting. time since 2011. It's going to be really powerful. Because there, is, there are a lot of silos for small business, but there's no one central place. Literally the heartbeat, and we are that. So, That's right. Anyway, but free subscription, sbtmagazine.net or smallbusinessmagazine.com. Hard copies are $69 a year. Which is nothing. Can't promise digital stay complimentary and can't promise that the hard copy be $69. It costs more than Right now it is. And it's That's good. right. So go go there and you can get one of your own and uh, become a fan of us, SBT Magazine, on Facebook at Small Business Day Magazine. If you ever miss a show or want to go back and watch them. All courtesy of Mr. Ron Coleman, MovieWhip.com, who does more than just movies and film and video. He does search engine optimization to tie in with one's advertising. So all the past shows are archived on Small Business Today magazine on Facebook. And a few and Premier Agent Magazine on Facebook and a few other places. So there and you go. Now we want to mention Dr. Scurry well, is here. Well, we do, we, we're going to come back. We're gonna, yeah, we're going to come back to her for afterwards. When okay. you do your shout out, we're going to then spend all our time next with Dr. Scurry. Speaking right of here. events, if you're listening to this over the weekend, uh, next Tuesday <laughs> the twentieth, we're going to have a lunch and learn. Uh, with Kim Sawyer. Is that in that? Is, that, in that, is, in is it that this one? one? With Kim Sawyer, who is an executive business coach. At, at the and he's uh, nice looking the too Wyndham for Hotel, ladies yeah, ni- Wyndham Hotel <laughs> Energy Corridor I-10 and Highway 6 <laughs> less than $15 for a buffet such and a deal Kim Sawyer and he's great and he charges a lot more he charges a couple he, thousand he's a year, wonderful no columnist he's audience. really a great columnist he does a terrific job and that's our lunch and learn coming up next uh Next Tuesday. And, and where then, can they in, sign up to and go? And November 10th. Where can people sign up to go? November 10th is Michelle Chisholm. Okay. Michelle. And they Michelle. can just inbox me to uh, at steve.labine at sbtmagazine.net. And I will save them a seat personally. And what hotel is it at again? At Wyndham Hotel, Energy Corridor. Nice, lovely Highway buffet. Highway 6 and I-10. Well, now they're doing a personal buffet just for us. Oh, yeah. A little abbreviated, but nonetheless. Still Nice. Do you want to introduce Dr. Scurria? Yeah, I'm going to introduce Dr. Scurria. Well, we've got a do minute. We've we got a minute. Do, do we, we have enough time? I can. I, well, just. Let's try. Okay. okay. Dr. Scurria. Here's Dr. Scurria. Here is okay. Dr. Scurria. <laughs> Pretty in pink today for this is October. We're still celebrating uh, breast, breast cancer, cancer awareness. awareness. And Dr. Scurry is a board certified family practice a physician with over 30 years of experience. She received her medical degree from the University of Mississippi and she completed her family medicine residency at Baylor College of Medicine, one of the best colleges in the U.S. Absolutely. She's on staff at Park Plaza Hospital, St. Luke's Episcopal Hospital, Texas Women's Hospital, and Texas Children's Hospital. She's affiliated with, with MDVIP, a concierge style practice. 
going to ask more about that. Her practice now has less than 500 patients, and she has a small, comfortable office in Bel Air, Texas, where she sees every patient herself, offers same or next day appointments, calls her patients back, and gives more personalized one-on-one medical care. With MDVIP, she focuses on wellness and prevention and strives to be proactive with her patients' medical problems. So that's really great. And we're going to talk to Dr. Scurry about her practice and her advice. The concierge medicine is exactly. exciting me. When we come back. And, and you're listening to Small, Small Biz Day Magazine. Magazine Talk Show on the, the SBT Magazine Radio Network. Hello, I'm Paul Marcus, owner of Affordable Searches, your premier investigation company specializing in comprehensive background checks nationwide. Business owners know one of the most important things to do is the hiring of employees. However, if you make mistakes or you don't check them out thoroughly, this could lead to problems. Some of the problems may be unsafe business environment, possible violence in the workplace, negligent hiring lawsuits, and a turnover of employees. Our website has a wealth of information for you to read and learn how to run the correct background checks. We are also available for free consultations at 1-877-685-6691. Visit our testimonials page to see what our current customers say about us. And welcome back to Small Business Today Magazine Talk Show on the, on the SBT, SBT Magazine, Magazine Radio Network. Network. Indeed we do. That's right. We introduced Dr. Scaria, who we met through the Houston Metropolitan Chamber of Commerce. What an amazing organization. Wonderful organization. What's special about them is they're very proactive with each other. That They do so much that they support each other as individual. Like if one's a member, member I can't talk. How did that happen? Can you that? <laughs> How did that happen? If one's a member... They interact a lot of times with other members. It's it's not the exception. It's the rule, which I found very very fascinating, and uh, that uh, that makes them special. So they're not just trying to get noted with the the other the city or the public. They're very much interacting with each other and, it's and supporting not just a each other. Cutting and have a nice day. It's they do a lot of support services and and uh, luncheons and speakers and conferences and they really are special do you know the scissors they use they've been using for 60, right? 66 years that's like amazing that. amazing is that cool there are scissors well and they're so big you never want to run into that <laughs> <laughs> anyway. but uh anyway dr scurry welcome to our show we're thank so glad you welcome to join us and we're so glad to meet you through the uh houston the metropolitan, metropolitan chamber and uh i'm very happy to be here you well i'm happy to have you um <laughs> I, so. lo- I love you i said i like the the pearls and the earrings are just i'm stealing them after the show well you better run <laughs> <laughs> dr scurry how did you decide on the medical medical field well, when I was young, I always wanted to work in the laboratory of a hospital, so I majored in chemistry in college, and when I finished, I went to work at MD Anderson Hospital as a med tech, mm-hmm. and I worked in the lab, and I was very happy. But the best part of that job was the patient contact that I had each morning when I went up on the floor and drew blood from the patients. And so I decided that I wanted to do something that gave me more patient contact and allowed me to interact with the patients. So I decided to go to medical school, and that's how it all started. Were you at MD Anderson when they started the Taxol trials? Um, Maybe, yes, I think I was. Um, But that was in another section that I wasn't so familiar with. Okay, just wondering it. Yeah. I'm a little ADD because my sister-in-law, Dr. Frankie Holmes, Oh my gosh! Is, uses her and, and she yes, of course she's started a the tax breast trials. cancer uh, specialist. specialist. And yes, this is I know Dr. breast Holmes. cancer awareness month. Well, that's why pink. I wore pink right. to try to remind everybody to be sure, all the women to be sure and get their mammograms. Yes, exactly. ma'am. Very important. Yes, ma'am. Because my husband's sister and mother and grandmother, uh, well, the, his grandmother and mother died of breast cancer. Mm-hmm. They had the BRCA1 Ashkenazi gene, oh, and yes. his sister I helped to get through Betty Bessemer, who's also a breast cancer survivor. She introduced me to Dr. Holmes and um, I took my sister home when she moved here to Dr. Holmes and um, had to end up having a mastectomy and hysterectomy because of the protocol and um, she's now been very successful healthy healthy sister yes it's a curable cancer if people will just get their mammograms and let it get picked up Check early it that's it see at the time you never mentioned 
the C word in the 50s and 60s. You never, I didn't know my mother had cancer or died of cancer. I was 17 when she died till I was 44. Just, it was just something you never discussed. It was just, you died. Isn't that crazy? That must be a northern thing because I, my father died at 37 of cancer. I knew what no, happened. No, it was a bad karma thing. From I while. guess it was a northern. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe, maybe <laughs> Brighton Bridge memories, the memoirs or whatever, they whisper, she had cancer. Yeah. And I never understood that until I met more people from up north. And that was it. Now, where are you from? I'm originally from Mississippi. What but part? I, uh, Starkville, Mississippi, home uh-huh. of Mississippi State University. Woohoo! <laughs> What's the mascot there? Uh, bulldog. Oh, I like that. I Go like dogs. <laughs> and so, how did you get here? Well, I went to college at the University of Dallas, a small Catholic university outside of Dallas in Irving, Texas. And uh, when I finished there, I moved to Houston and went to work at MD Anderson Hospital as a med tech, as I mentioned. Right. And then when I decided to go to medical school, I went back to Mississippi, to my home state, and went to the University of Mississippi and graduated from there uh, with my medical degree. So then I'm an Ole Miss alumni. So now that's a rivalry with the Mississippi State Bulldogs. So wow. I'm an Ole Miss alumni, but I still pull for Mississippi, Mississippi State. State. That's cool. And so then you went to Baylor. So then I decided to do a family practice residency, and I came back to Houston and did my residency. Finished in 82, and I went to work for Cigna Health Plan in one of their uh, staff model clinics. And I worked for them for about 10 years. And then um, I worked for Aetna for two years as a medical director. But I missed the patient contact. I was going to say. And all that administration. Not right. not a good fit for me. It wasn't because you said you really wanted to be, right. meet the people. So in 92, I started my own private practice uh, with no patients. And <laughs> um, I built it up to over 3,000 patients. Oh, my gosh. 11 staff. And I had two physician assistants working for me. And I was going gangbusters what and how did your health survive that well i was getting pretty burned out i was gonna uh, say because i found myself working harder and harder and uh, to see more and more patients and i was ending up spending less and less time with each patient and i really didn't like that and i was getting very frustrated because you know the reason i went into medicine was to take time with my patients and that practice was not allowing that so i had to do something different so what did you do what steps did you do to because that hits a major overhaul to go from three thousand to five less than five hundred less than five hundred well so this uh, company called mdvip came along and told me about their practice uh, model where they have the doctors uh, keep their practice very small and when your practice is small you can take more time with the patients and um, I became affiliated with them and took up with their program. Now, do they help do the billing part and all the technical stuff? Well, the practice is uh, basically mine. I'm just affiliated with them, uh-huh. so I do have a billing company. Okay. And I'm still on the managed care plans, and it's just like a regular practice. And I collect a copay and build the insurance, and everything is just like a regular family practice, except my patients have to join the MDVIP program to get all the special benefits that come with that. We're going to come back with those benefits uh, when we come back from break. And, and more uh, about concierge. I want to find out more about the concierge. More about concierge yeah. and more about... I'm here to tell about you about Dr. it. Scary here's practice. It's, it's real comfortable up there, Barbara. It's real... It's real nice. Cozy. You'd like it. You'd I'm sure I would. There. I'd be ready. You got cat things around and pictures. And, yeah, cool. Like it. Yeah. I'll bring my cats with me. She's a big rescuer. You know. <laughs> Squirrels who come limping, come to the door <laughs> looking for her. You know, that's, but that's that's about their heart for, for pets. We've got to go to another break. Uh, we'll be right back after these messages. You're listening to Small Business Today Magazine Talk Show on the, on the SBT, SBT Magazine Radio, Radio Network. Network. At Affordable Searches, our mission is to provide our customers with the most thorough background check possible to protect you, your employees, and also your business. We do so by contracting with companies across the country that provide us with the best information possible and in a quick turnaround time. Our turnaround times average anywhere from 24 to 48 hours. Our pricing is very competitive and we are always here for you. We're always here to answer any questions you have 
please give us a call at 1-877-685-6691 and we'll be glad to answer each and every question that you have. And welcome back to Small Business Today Magazine Talk Show on, on the, the SPT Magazine Radio Network. You're getting good at that. We have to bring you back. That's right. <laughs> I'm practicing. Once again, I'm Steve Levine, executive publisher of Small Business Today Magazine. My wife, and Barbara Bram Davis Levine, uh, co hosts this show every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Always have great guests that you want to hear from. And it's all about you, the aspiring entrepreneur or small business owner. And and great information that benefits every business owner. We like you to, it, we'd like to introduce you to successful business owners and people we met that can be of help to you, and also charities that you should know about and, That's right. and become part of. Because the and, one key thing that every successful business owner has told us is that they always are giving back. They're not looking to see what they can get out of giving back. They just do it because it's the right thing. And we like to introduce special charities that are not nationwide supported to everyone that's maybe looking to support a charity. So that's what we believe everybody, wherever you live, should try and support your own local charity. Not one. just your lo own local business owners, but your local right. charities too. And we too. have a special one coming up tomorrow night. We are sponsors of a Night of Superstars. Night of the Superstars. Recognizing in an Academy Awards style Event. It's nightofsuperstars.org. They can check out the event put on Houston and see what they're doing with special needs kids that and have health adults. issues and young adults that have done something special. That's right. And they're being recognized and on the red carpet. The, they're getting auto, giving out autographs. They're walking down with celebrities such we as had one of them Gover on show Lieutenant we're Governor. Present, yeah. we're, we're having Grant Monnier on the show. Right. Who we are presenting the award to tomorrow night. He's autistic. He tears up paper as part of He's his OCD. And he makes gorgeous artwork. 10,000 pieces of torn up pieces of paper makes his exquisite big, big artwork. And big work. <laughs> <laughs> so that stimming thing ends up to be a talent and that they were able to utilize that's, that's amazing and they're exciting so, so now let's talk to dr scurrying yes so she has a practice, practice in bel-air in bel-air with mdvip MD, and what is mdvip do you know what that stands for well it sounds for uh, value in uh prevention oh md for medical medical doctor, doctor value, value in, in prevention. prevention and the idea for the mdvip model is to focus on wellness and uh, prevention and we try to be proactive with our patient and find illnesses and problems before they become a big bigger problem so the MDVIP program if you join that program and become one of my patients uh, there are a lot of benefits to that in every year you get an annual wellness exam which is about a two and a half hour exam wow. Uh, that includes um, a comprehensive s uh, set of laboratory tests and tests to measure your um, respiratory uh, function. You do a, we do an EKG and a vision test and a hearing test and uh, several questionnaires to assess health in different areas like diabetes, nutrition, fitness, emotional health. You come in, you get blood drawn, we run all these tests, and then you come back in about a week, and I sit down and go over every test that you had run the week before oh. and explain to the patient the findings, what they mean, and what the patient needs to do to stay well and healthy and out of trouble. That's wonderful, because, you know, some most people don't have... It's crazy the background of me that likes to read everything and anything, medical journals. Um, and so, unfortunately, Steve was hospitalized last Tuesday. He went in to have an MRI as a follow-up for the problems that he had from hitting his head when we had the flood in May. Mm -hmm. And they made the mistake of saying, I, I feel like there's pressure on my chest. He was in, in, in Methodist Hospital. Uh-oh. So they, that's a heart Holy notice for their heart. That. So everything they do, well, the heart, the transplants and everything. And uh, so they immediately admitted him. Two days him. later. Two days later. The good and news was tests, they yeah. found out that he, his heart was fine. But they said to him, well, you have, thank goodness we found out that you were taking high blood pressure medication, that we need to change it because your creatine levels are very elevated. Now, he didn't know what creatine levels, but well, those that will cause renal failure. And again, he didn't quite understand that. I said, it means your kidneys will fail if we get keep up this Ooh. Okay. And so it takes people, you get these reports back. I've gotten a whole slew of, you know, your testing, and it's just there now if people didn't know what they meant. 
creatine this, your glucose this, your blood serum that. People would know. So it's so nice to have somebody that's going to sit there and hold your hand. And that was the most through. valuable piece of information. The MRI on the brain was fine. But uh, we got to change but, that medicine. And, and we did. So we thank God. It out. So he that was good. Kidney value or something. worth knowing right there. Yeah. Okay, it was two days in the hospital. But anyway, back to Dr. <laughs> Curia, right? But, you know, I'll tell you, the, I never heard of concierge medicine until I watching Regal uh, Royal Pains. Royal right? Pains. Have That's right. Have you seen right. that show? Yes. I love that show. But how... And, and of course, where it's the set and everything. How how realistic is that? Well, uh, <laughs> it, it's a, a little bit, not quite. A little bit, not quite. <laughs> not quite realistic. <laughs> so, um, you know, in my practice, I encourage the patients to come to my office. But I do have some patients that um, are homebound, and so you know, I will go out to see them Isn't that uh, wonderful? if I need to. I mean, I think that's just so, so wonderful. Um, I don't want to get into that too much because then I can't be in the office to see all my patients. And, you know, one of the things that we uh, try to do for our patients is offer same day or next day appointments. The appointment slots are 30 minutes long. I take a lot of time with every patient. I know all my patients personally. Um, we I try to act as a partner with my patients in uh determining their health care needs and making decisions and the patients really like that care and attention in 101 it, it, i've got to say my mother this is a crazy situation that happened my mother and you know having a doctor like like what you did years ago she had fallen and broken her finger at the dome mm -hmm. and they still have a doctor said so no and they gave her a card of a doctor and she never went it, the, and under her op ophthalmologist ended up cutting off her cast or something. She never went to the doctor. My stepfather called and said, something's wrong with your mother. Uh, you need to see what's matter. She was I'm, I'm out of breath. I'm having trouble on the bathroom. I said, well, something's not right. I called her doctor and they couldn't see her that day. I said, well, come tomorrow. I said, no, my mother needs to see somebody now. So why don't you go to an emergency room? And my mother said, take that card. She had that card for almost a year on her dresser. I called the doctor. May rest in peace. He's passed away now, Dr. Simon Sonic. And he, I said, I, you don't know me. My mother wants to come see. She's not well. They bring her in. They let her bring in right away. I had to use a wheelchair to roll her in. And they saw her. He really, as she was hemorrhaging, oh and rushed gosh. across. He said, "Honey, open the door, honey." And we had to be right across from Westbury Hospital at the time. That's how many years ago. And he's going, yeah, "Open the door, honey." And I'm running across, opening doors, and he's running across the parking lot to the ER at Westbury Hospital. She, her veins had collapsed by the time we got there. It was amazing that he, she survived. But from then on, he went to see him. And my stepfather, years later, had a stroke. And he did come to the house and make a house call. Those two things, seeing my mother when she needed to be seen that day, coming to my stepfather when it was an impossible situation, he, he needed to be seen by a doctor, the inquisition of having a stroke. Right. And so what a wonderful thing that you do this already in your regular practice, of course, going to house call, as you don't do every day, but in special situations. That's right. It's nice to know that you'll do it's that. It's kind of Marcus Wellaby uh, well medicine. Yeah. Your older uh, yeah. People would know who I'm talking about. The yeah. care that we really tried to. I don't want to use the word old per, school, but I personalized I, care. My medical care came from a doctor who made house calls, and he had a fairly big practice in in Nyack, New York. And but he'd still come, you know, when needed, especially for original families that. Uh, that's that nice. Started with yep. Growing up in Houston, we didn't have that. We didn't have doctors that made. I mean, my. That wasn't done. Now, I, I did have a nice pediatrician that I took my poodle and made him examine the poodle first before I would get a shot. <laughs> Great. Uh, uh, let me ask Dr. Scurry, do, do you do wellness coaching for people, uh, smokers and issues? Well, of course, I try to encourage my patients to quit smoking and uh, lose weight and exercise. And uh, speaking of exercise, uh, I have a walking program. And once a month on a Saturday morning, the fourth Saturday of every month, we meet at Herman Park or another designated place. And all of my patients and their family and friends and neighbors are invited. Oh, right. And we walk for about 30 or 45 minutes. I give them a little talk, a little health uh, tip 
talk before the walk and then we walk together so i really try to promote and encourage regular exercise isn't that great well i mean if there's anybody and we of course we're all over the world people look at us i said doctors this is this is this is the model this is how everybody should be this is the model yeah, exactly i mean, this is it that people we need that that in the impersonalized medicine that right. you, you're you're a pelvis or you're a a, a clavicle or you're not a human being this is a whole person and that's that's so important. Well, what? see, that's what's good about MDVIP because I keep my practice small, and with the smaller number of patients, I'm able to deliver that kind of care. See, I really couldn't do that when I had 3,000 patients. You no. know, it just wasn't feasible. Well, you, you may have a small practice as far as the number of patients, but you've got a huge fan club. Well, thank and you. And by, by virtue of the posts we put on to promote the show and the comments that have come in, oh, she treats my elderly parents. Oh, yeah, I bring my kids there. So, you know, it, the, the comments have been, been wonderful, but you have a, a lot of very thank loyal you. people yeah, the who, who love you very much. Yeah, the patients are pretty complimentary of the MDVIP program and me, and so that's really nice. Do you, do you deal with geriatrics? Oh, I have a lot of geriatric patients. You know, I take Medicare, and I'm like I say, I'm on most of the managed care plans. Um, so I have a pretty diverse practice. Now, are you specifically a, a, a um, cons in, in the program considered a general practitioner? I'm a family, family pra board, fam uh, board certified family practitioner. Okay. So I'm trained to take care of children, young adults, and seniors, all ages. The whole schmear. We should ask how people get in touch with Dr. Scurry or schedule an appointment, both by website. Well, you can go online. There you go. Sandra Scuria, S-C-U-R-R-I-A. I've got a website, and I'm um, pretty easy to find. Or you can go to MDVIP and type in Sandra Scuria, and I will come up. And you got a great staff, too. Now, is it SandraScuria.com? Uh, SandraScuria.com, that's right. Yeah. What regular tests should one have every year? Does it change with what age they are? Well, a little bit, but that big uh, physical that I talked about, the wellness exam, we try to do a, a complete blood count that checks for anemia and white cells and platelets, and we do a chemistry panel, a complete metabolic profile panel, and we check kidney function and liver function and sugar levels and electrolytes. And then uh, it's really important to check lipid levels. Everybody's cholesterol and triglyceride and the ratios of those numbers are really important when assessing uh, cardiovascular health. And I try to check uh, a test called hemoglobin A1C to screen people for diabetes. And uh, we check a vitamin D level and uh, thyroid studies. Um, those are the general tests that we try to get on, in that wellness exam every year. And uh, try to pick up diseases and problems, as I said, before they become a major problem. Dealing with sick people, which you often do, how do you stay healthy? Well, I don't know how that works out. <laughs> <laughs> I think you build up antibodies because you're exposed to a lot of viruses and illnesses. I don't get sick that much. Thank goodness. Um, so, you know, I... I know this is a crazy, there's so many pros and cons and people telling all this stuff about take flu shots, don't take flu shots, take pneumonia, this one's not working anymore, that one won't work anymore. What's well, your opinion? Do you have an well, opinion? Do you want to I'm share a big, it? I mean, yes, I will. <laughs> okay. I'm a big advocate of the flu shot, and I think everybody should get a flu shot every year. It, the virus is a killed virus, and so you cannot contract the flu from getting the flu vaccination. Um, so I really encourage people to get a flu shot. What about the other one is the pneumonia one? And the pneumonia shot, um, people that are over the age of 65 should have a pneumonia shot. And if you have um, an illness, a chronic illness like uh, diabetes or long-term asthma or some of the connective tissue disorders, it would be advantageous to get a pneumonia shot at an earlier age. Now, do but do some. I've had people complain that they the the injection site has caused some kind of fever in the well, area. Well, you can you know if. Any injection, vaccine or otherwise, you can get a local reaction with a little redness and right. warmth and swelling. But we just have our patients take some Tylenol and put some Benadryl cream on it, and and they're just fine. And that's good. That's so good. it works out well. Okay, that's good. They're good to know because I have asthma, and I I've, I've started. Do I take it? Do I not? I'm, well, you should really take a flu shot yeah, because yeah. if you get the flu, um, you know your lungs are already a little bit compromised, right. and um, if you get the flu and it settles in your lungs you know it can be very 
very deadly. Dr. Scurry, did you tell us how many patients you, you have in your caseload? I didn't. I have a, a close to 300 patients. Um, you know, the MDVIP program wants me, they won't let me have over 600. So I'm, I'm building it up and okay. uh, could use some so you are, so you a few, could a few use more a few patients. More. I'm just checking because we don't want to get too many people calling. No, we don't want to get too many because then I can't take so much time with every patient. That's right. But if you, do you want the, uh, the care and the caring heart that Dr. Scuria offers with this MDVIP plan, which sounds like a major bargain. I think it's a, a great wonderful program. program. Then is drscuria.com? No, right. is it Dr. Scuria also? So right. You also said sandrascuria.com? It'll, it'll, either one will come either up. Either one, drscuria.com or sandrascuria.com, and we'll take you there. And this this is a terrific lady. If you're Bel Air or Myerland or West Southwest Erie Houston, or Southwest Does, Houston. Well, you know what? Six, if, six ten. How, I'm on uh, six ten, conveniently located between Bel Air and Bissonette. It's very easy to get to the office. This this MDVIP. Are there a lot of concierge doctors now? Is that becoming more trendy? Or? It is. Uh, MDVIP has about eight hundred physicians across the U S. And um, you know we. Um, that's another good thing about the MDVIP program. If you join that program and you're a member of the MDVIP program and you go to another city and get sick, uh, you can. there's retroprocity. So you could oh. see an MDVIP physician in that city if there's one there. That's the worst thing when you travel. You're oh, sick in yeah. the hotel room. Don't you know don't who know to call. Anybody. Been there, been there, and done that. And several of my patients have taken advantage of that, so that really works out well. Yeah, I mean, Chubby Checker, who's a very dear friend of mine, my children's, uh, used to do travel for all the oldies rock and roll tours. Right, right, right. And had the travel agency. And still, when he comes in town, he just took us to uh, Golden Corral last week. Jerry, was it? Yeah, or it was his birthday ago. week two weeks ago. Wow. And uh, he's even after my husband was killed, he would come take my children to the movies. Neat. Well, uh, a few concerts back, he came and said. He was and, Stafford Center. And Stafford Dude. Center, and he was just sick as a dog. And so, fortunately, he was able to get a prescription called in from his physician in New York. And my, uh, we had Rush Med Pharmacy as a client. Uh, as a client, and uh, they deliver, by the way. Wow. And so that's uh, Rash- Lashonda Rush, and she's her last name's Rush, and they do, and no charge. They deliver all over the city, wherever you are. She's on Stella Link now too. Besides yeah. Besides the, the one on um, Belfort near Chimney Rock. And just the greatest, and they're very for, uh, comparable prices to Walgreens, are more affordable than their prices and uh, so she was sweet enough to personally deliver to Stafford Center the ho- hotel where he was That's staying and take great. it so yeah because it is it is a quandary you get right. sick what do you do now if my patients get sick out of town you know they can call me and if I can take care of them you know and call in a prescription to where they are I will do that so I'm always available 24 if, 7 by phone if not they can call you and you have and, access to a list to refer them or to I somebody. can get them to a doctor in that town my goodness, that is so wonderful. I'm just Well, you've got great help there, too, which I alluded to a little bit ago. Tell us about some of the people who Well, I have two uh, staff in my office. Amelda is my medical assistant that helps me in the back. And Amy is the receptionist in the front. And they answer the phone and are very responsive to the patients and get me the messages. And then I, I call all the patients back. So I'm a doctor that calls you back. What a concept. How often... I mean, when do you do you have a set time when you call people back? Well, I kind of call them in between patients all during the day. That's so nice. Because I've I've had where no specific time. I'll hear. I keep waiting. I'll get an assistant. I'll get an aide and call me at the end of the day. Well, I talk to them. I said, well, I have another question. You know, well, I I'll have to wait. You know, you know, it's so frustrating. No, no, no. I call my patients back. They really like that. That's this, great. Uh, this should, she should be the yardstick by which everybody else. Everybody. Does. Does I mean, you, it's wonderful. I think so. Thank you. Um, tell me, do you have any special stories? I can't mention names, of course, of how you felt like you really, it, the concierge medicine worked so well with somebody that. Well, I'll tell you one story. There were, uh, one of my longtime patients, uh, She, this lady had been a patient of mine. And when I converted over to the MDVIP, she signed up for that. And uh, she came in for her 
wellness exam and part of the wellness exam includes a pulmonary function test and we ran that test on her and it was abnormal mm -hmm. so I sent her for a chest x-ray and the chest x-ray showed a small uh, nodule a little spot on her chest x-ray so we sent her on to get a cat scan of her chest and that little spot still showed up so we thought it was nothing and we sent her to the pulmonologist and he said you know we really should biopsy it so we got a biopsy of it, and it turned out to be an early lung cancer. Wow. So she got into MD Anderson. That little spot was excised. She didn't have to have chemotherapy. Okay. She didn't have to have radiation therapy. Holy and now moly. she's cancer-free because we stumbled. On, she was asymptomatic. She wasn't having any problems. But we stumbled onto it with that big wellness exam. So we were very pleased Thank about God. that outcome. Thank God. We've got to go to a break, but we want to give a shout out to Ron Coleman. MovieWhip.com. Movie courtesy of the, the video, YouTube videos we have on our, our Facebook page, Small Sale, Business Today Magazine. SalesNexus.com has a CRM and wonderful email Straight marketing right program. Right up in the September issue I about wrote Craig this article. great article. Great. <laughs> One of our board members, et cetera. That's right. Our Jerome auto Davis shop. on keyboard. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> engineer extraordinaire. Engineer. Autoshopper.biz. Tony Noun. Right. And Paul Marcus, AffordableSearches.com. So if you need to do a background search on your employees or anybody that you're questioning uh, their veracity, amazing, he is amazing. amazing. And and affordable is an understatement. Exactly. But well, we've got to go to break, but we'll be right back with Dr. Sandra Scurrier in just a moment. And you're listening to Small Business Today Magazine Talk Show on, on the, the SBT, SBT Magazine, Magazine Radio, Radio Network. Network. CRM sucks. Everyone told you that you needed one for years, and you fought them off. But you finally relented. Guess what? Your instincts were right. After all, it's cost way more money and time than you ever expected, right? And now, you have to fight with your team to get them to use the system. It's been this way for 20 years. It's not just you. 50% of CRM implementations fail to meet expectations. And it's not getting any better. Sure. You need to manage customers and you need to manage those relationships. But what you really need is a business operating platform. You need to be able to create systems and processes and automate those systems and processes. Automation is the key. What you do is unique. The way you work with your customers is what makes you special to them. Don't change who you are. Make the technology fit what's unique and special about you. There's another important piece. Your customers expect to do business with you in so many different ways now. You've got to be able to give them exactly what they want, when they want it, instantly and automatically. Your CRM sucks because you've always needed more. First, go identify the buying process that your customer goes through when they make a decision to purchase what you sell. And then marry your sales process to that buying process. Then build the technology to fit those processes. And then finally, require your team to follow the processes and use the technology. All you've got to do is answer two basic questions. Where do your leads come from and what do you do with them when you get them? Just make it easy for your team to do what you do and be who you are. One often overlooked opportunity is lead nurturing. Just staying in touch with everyone. After all, you probably only close maybe a third of the leads that come in. But what if you just stay in touch with the two thirds that you don't close? This is usually a no-brainer from a return on your investment point of view. Map out the unique way that you work with your customers and make the technology make that easier and faster.
And welcome back, back to Small Business Day Magazine back. Talk Show on the SBT Magazine, magazine Radio, Radio Network. That's my part. You I don't have to it. say it. I did that. It's my part. It. Anyway, you told we, me to say we it. Are, <laughs> we're here with Dr. Sandra Scurrier, who we met again through the Houston Metropolitan Chamber of Commerce. Amazing organization. Yeah. And we yeah. like them. I want to ask you, what what do you think is the best thing that you've gotten from being a member of, of the Houston Metropolitan Chamber? What's your favorite well, part? Well, I love being a member of the... Houston Metropolitan Chamber of Commerce. I was chairman of the board Ooh. for two years. Uh, a lot of work, but I met a lot of really neat people. It's a wonderful uh, networking uh, organization, and um, we have a lot of programs. We have Lunch and Learns. I'm part of the uh, Senior Alliance. We meet once a month and have uh, medical topics that are specific for seniors or people that have businesses that cater to uh, senior citizens, and we've had some very interesting speakers, mm -hmm. and we've had luncheons. The mayor has come to speak to us, and the uh, county judge, Judge Emmett. One time we had Mattress Mac come <laughs> give us a talk about their business and being an entrepreneur, and it's really good uh, information for your business and a networking opportunity. I love their energy and and how they reach out to special groups like the, the senior group and and uh, the leadership young young oh what was why it? am I blanking yeah, that's mom, okay we all emerging have leaders now emerging leaders yeah that's it and young professionals they have a group called the young Prof professionals and we have a governmental um, group that uh, we've had some political people come speak to us I think I think Zed Sultan's going to take it. Yes, Zed is our new uh, chairman of the board, and he's really doing a, ma a marvelous job. Marvelous. He's that right there and Peggy is right? just such a... Uh, Peggy Wilson is our doll. executive director, and she works really hard keeping us on track and uh, lining up all these programs. She's got great dimples, and her personality just causes those dimples to just even burst out more. <laughs> it's just great, great personality. Good as she can be. We're doing a feature article on them in the next issue so this is september so when the october comes out we have uh, we'll have a feature article and dr scurry is one of the supporters of that that feature article in uh coming out right yeah that's yeah. great and we had fun taking the picture for that because <laughs> we went to a, a cooking place yeah wasn't that a great place they uh what was the name of it i just went blank urban urban, urban chef urban, urban chef, chef. And it's over on Westland, like up uh, uh, near the Costco. That's right, near Costco. And I, I've never seen a chamber meet in the kitchen before. Well, that well, they are cooking up a lot of connections. Cooking up a lot of connections. That's, that's, that's yeah. a fact. That's right. And, and cooking up success for their members, and we can do that a lot with that. You know, we were talking about the concierge medicine, and again, of course. My Royal Pain show. I love the show, although it's pretty unrealistic about flying to fight off terrorists right, and all right, that crazy right. stuff. <coughs> Excuse me, but there are doctors. I mean, do they have a? How do they determine this? MD? They've got to be able to meet and interview. Don't they interview you to see if well, you really do. have the right? They have to. You know, they have to invite you to be an MD VIP physician. Um, so you have to have. Um, you know, a sizable practice, and you have to have the right practice philosophy uh, and be willing to have a smaller practice and be willing to take time with your patients. You know, and some doctors are kind of like uh, Doc Martin on the, um, the public radio s uh, station. You know, he's kind of a curmudgeon. <laughs> but the MDVIP doctors are not like that. They're very personable, and they're interested in taking time with their patients, and they want to keep their patients well and happy. And they and studies have shown that the patients that join the MDVIP program uh, have fewer hospitalizations wow. and stay well and healthier longer. And I think part of the reason is that they can get to their doctor when they're sick or they have something going on, and the doctor um, is willing to take time with them and so that we have better outcomes that attention to detail the That's attention right. to detail i i've i mean i've often i mean growing up and going to doctors and i especially the one that I detest the ob that that department oh, that ah you know, really good no 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 but i hate it it's like just horrible i was an only child didn't get my clothes off for anybody and, and so anyway so i mean i feel like every time i like, wham ma'am thank you ma'am you know okay here we go goodbye and it's like Wow, I hope they enjoyed it more than I did because it was pretty miserable. <laughs> 
So, you know, it's nice to have that personal thing where they talk to you and it's in seeing you as a whole person. Right. I think that's the biggest thing is seeing the person as a whole person. When my mother was going in the hospital to have, she had a, they'd been watching for six months. She had a triple A abdominal aortic aneurysm. They were watching it. She went in healthy other than that they said they said, got the results back for her stress test the day before said yes she passed the test they were okay don't think they really got it back anyway she had a heart attack on the table oh my gosh and um it was they she came back and fought and they had to have her uh respirate she on would never she not read on, breathe on her own and uh, uh i put a picture of how she looked before the day before she went in the hospital, you know, the pretty mm-hmm. the one driving the the cart for the Memorial Southwest where she volunteered, and the one that drove was volunteering uh, right. all the time. This is my mother. This is not a patient. This is not a triple A. This is my mother. She was a very very vivacious eighty three year old woman. She was not ever old, and I had to keep, you know, they they seem to just not care about the care because of her age. They right. just kind of, and that's why you need this kind of situation you need that concierge that caring one and one that we that it's just upsetting uh, question does a health care situation cause more problems these days that well it's pretty difficult i mean it's getting more difficult there's a lot of regulations on us and we have the electronic medical records and uh, there's a lot of bells and whistles that we have to uh, purchase and take time to do um, to satisfy the government requirements and Medicare requirements. Um, I think the ultimate goal is to deliver better care, but I'm not really sure that it does that just yet. So um, it's very stressful. Uh, but again, because my practice is small and I have time to deal with that, um, I think that is a great advantage to me. That's terrific. Um, in Bel Air, are uh, you? I, I love Bel Air. I love Bel Air. It, when I was a little girl, we lived in Bel Air. And nobody, people break out, the prisoners would break out from Sugarland. They come across the rice fields to Bel Air. And everybody asked my family, why are you living way out there? And now it's the center of Houston. Right. It's a great community, and uh, it's really close and convenient to my practice. And I have a lot of patients that live in Bel Air. And that's one of the reasons they pick me, because I'm very convenient. Um um, and I like practicing there, right on the loop. It's easy to get to. The parking is free. Oh, I like that. That's uh, great. The patients really, really like our office site. So I'm really pleased about that, too. What would your advice be for for patients or do patients coming on board with you? What would you, what would you tell them? Well, um, you know, I try to individualize for sure. each patient, depending on what their issues and problems are. Uh, but in general, I try to encourage everybody to follow a healthy diet, uh, to get regular exercise, to uh, drink alcohol in moderation or not at all, and certainly to not smoke. Uh, those are my four main uh, things to advise patients on. That's a that's a good start. I think that's great. I she w- like my formula now. Is it is it better choice of, eat, of eating more water, less sugar, more cardio? <laughs> so that that fits in with gonna, what I say. That's going to be it for life. I, I mean that. And 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 you've gone through the growing pains of building a business from before when you right. built the practice. What's your best words of advice for anybody going into business? What do you say? Some do's and don'ts started from you. Well, I think it's important to uh, make an outline of a business plan and uh, write down your goals and. Um, try to meet with your staff regularly i think it's real important to be good to your staff and um if you take care of them they will take care of you That's and it. i think you should be one of those number one answers where we ask people what their their best words of advice are for the cover story is that what they take say care, one of the best thing is top five is take take care of your people and they'll take care of your clients Yes. Right, right. Yeah. Happy employees uh, or good employees. How do, how do you have any special uh, things that you do with your employees? Anything? Well, I took I them. To ask that. I took them to lunch today. Oh, oh. good. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Uh, no, we uh, we try to celebrate the holidays and uh, we decorate the office and uh, we'll dress up for Halloween. Fun. And uh, last year we were superheroes. I was the Green Lantern, and uh, one of my staff. And the year before we were. Uh, uh, the cat. I was the cat in the hat, and I had thing one and thing two. <laughs> Cute. So uh, we have a good time with that. Now, oh, you have fun. Do y'all have? I mean, 
pediatric? You, do you do pediatric? Or I do see children, um, but really uh, in Houston, there's so many good pediatricians. I've kind of gotten away from that. So most of my patients are adults. Uh, and because I don't see many patients, I don't keep um, a supply of the children's vaccine. So it's a little tough for me to do a thorough job on the children. But I have a lot of teenage uh, uh, patients that are children of my MDVIP patients. And if you're an MDVIP member, then your children, uh, you don't have to pay a fee for your children. And up to the age of 26, they're free. Wow. I mean, they, yeah. I collect the insurance, but um, but there's no uh, MDVIP fee Fees. for them. That's nice. Is there an ideal patient that you want to work with? Is well, any patient is ideal. Is run the, the any spectrum? patient is ideal as long as they are willing to be cooperative and uh, try to follow my recommendations and uh, work with me on uh, doing the best things for their health and following the plans that we lay out to keep them healthy. You're probably more men don't want to tell you what's wrong. Or did, I well, mean, I have a lot of men I, patients. Well, it's all right. It'll go away. It'll and little, they tell me, reasonable. sometimes they tell me more than I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Enough said. Um, do you, how do you feel about I used to go with a list. I'd have all these questions. Well, I have patients that do that, too, and um, and we just, you know, I have time now. I take the list, and we go down them one by one and uh, address each of the issues for the patients. And they really like that, that I take time with them. I remember when it was 1984, my neck got real big at a conference, Ooh. and I thought maybe this is a shirt collar <laughs> shrunk. <laughs> and I started getting more lethargic, and my skin was getting scaly, and my voice was getting raspy, and I... I mean, I was pushing. I'll, I'll be all right. Just, I'd probably just need some rest. And I had my my two partners with Has Publishing Apartment Guy and said, "You're going to the doctor, or you're fired." Really? Oh, okay. So ended up. Uh, I wrote down. In fact, I typed down everything. All these little things. My skin was dry and scaly, and throat, uh, voice was raspy. I was real lethargic. And he said. Hashimoto's hypothyroid disease. I was going to say thyroid disorder. Thyroid, thyroid. It sure sounds like it. What are, you, what are you talking about? And and is there surgery? No, just synthoid. But it was coming in with those exact symptoms, and he said there there's a match. Who's Hashimoto anyway? It sounds like a Japanese guy that started that. It does it it, I think it was. Well, I think he should keep it. Kept it in Japan. <laughs> no, well, that's why I just call it hypothyroidism. <laughs> Ism, but, but Hashimoto sounds like a cool guy. Like, yeah. Really? Like also has a Japanese steakhouse or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, once again, we are with uh, Dr. Dr. Sandra Scurrier. And oh, yeah. And I want to make sure everybody knows the website is mdvip.com forward slash Sandra Scurria, MD. That's S-C-U-R-R-I-A. S-C-U-R-R-I-A. I just said that. You said that. No, I said that. I don't know. You said it. And and um, also, if you want to email her, it's Dr. Scurria at mdvip.com. Real simple, Dr. Scurria. Sounds like an amazing program with a, with a terrific doctor with a great heart. And I, again, I don't want to use the word old school, but it is. It's, it's that caring position, and you're not just a number and, you know, room to room to room. But that's it, what it's all about. It's a, it's a family practice, and might as well be in the country. You know, but I know. I to be the country. The, well, like I said, I can tell you the one Bel, time the little town of Bel Air. It, uh, growing up, the one time the doctor made a house call was that Doctor Simon Sonic, and that that was the same one that saw my mother that same day with the staff and. It's so important to have great staff, right? Right. There you go. <coughs> and again, you've got the website. If you're not already somebody's patient, you need a great family practice physician, we recommend Dr. Sandra Scurrier. She's wonderful and a great heart, caring individual. And if you come out to the Houston Metropolitan Chamber functions, go to their their event and one of the networking events, you are sure to meet her because she's a. I'll she, probably be she, there. She, she <laughs> and probably beat you there. So, uh, and uh, we've had a great show today. I mean, I've talked to her about allergies right now. <laughs> <laughs> we can do that after the show, okay? And and your issues. I know. And, no. uh, next I'm Monday we'll be with. Uh, that's the uh, 19th, I believe that is, with Wei Lee, chairman of the board of the Southern News Group. It will be our cover story in November of 2012. And we'll be at his studio at uh, 55.5 ITV. 
in his uh, TV studio. We're broadcasting from there about an event he's got coming up. And, and it's still Wednesday, on our Mixler.com forward slash SBT dash magazine dash radio dash network. Part, <laughs> if you miss any part of the show, shame on you. Um, the uh, We'll have the audio up on the different Facebook pages today. Oh, there's time's up. And, uh, <laughs> and shut up. Today. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> and uh, next Wednesday, by the way, Youthpreneurs. Oh, yeah. Youthpreneurs that's cool. and the mothers who love them. Next that's Wednesday. right. It's gonna no, be oh, that should be good. We have two 8-year-olds and two 15-year-olds making money. No, you said two 8 and two 16-year-olds. Well, they're, they're sophomores, so they're probably 15. 15, okay. Yeah, somewhere there. <laughs> somewhere. Anyway, but that's Wednesday. I don't remember Friday, but... Uh, had a, you don't remember yesterday. That's a short-term memory. <laughs> anyway, great show today. Thank you, Dr. Scaria, for being Thank here. You. And Thank uh, you. And shout out again for the Houston Metropolitan Chamber. And uh, you've been listening to Small Business Today Magazine Talk Show on, on the, the SBT, SBT Magazine Radio Network. Network.